31 of the people who tested positive for coronavirus in Jigawa State are al Majiray, sent back to the state from Kano State. Now, this is coming from the chair of the State Task Force Committee on COVID-19 and Health Commissioner, Dr. Abba Zakari. Zakari said, and I quote, out of a total of 51 new cases, 31 are al Majiray. Before now, we had 118 cases plus the 51. That is a total of 169 cases. He said 56% of all the cases are al Majiray repatriated from from Kano. The health commissioner said that while the state government has plans to establish its own testing center in Duse, the state is working with a laboratory in Kaduna to test, to test all al brought in from other states as part of measures to contain the spread of the pandemic in the state. At the moment, the pandemic has already spread to eight out of the 27 local government areas of that state. And now we have Usman Kambari Mohammed, who is, belongs to Teach for Nigeria North, joining me via Zoom to share his view on the ongoing deportation of over 400 al -Majari. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Now, 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 some have raised objections to the recent deportation of al uh, Why have our governors been able to get away with this will be the question. Okay, yes, um, some have objected the deportation because they feel it's a violation of the Section 41 of the Constitution. But I can tell you that, that uh, on the other hand, a great number of the northern population at this point in time, they are against the current al system because it's no longer effective, it's not efficient as it was in the past in the past. So um, if recently around, I think, uh, February, the Kano state government has placed a ban on street begging. And when it did that, there was uh, much of a backing by the society because um, I think everybody is saying a no to it. But um, along the way, they said they want to ensure that these children are having um, a, a free education the free and compulsory education as enshrined in the policy of the national policy of education in Nigeria. Yeah. Mohammed, what does the fact that we can practice this among some of the most vulnerable, you can say that the al of course, are one of the vulnerable in society. The fact that we can practice this among them, what does it say about the future of our society, even as a people, as Nigerians? <sighs> um, actually, if this uh, very current al system continues, in, the, in, in our current uh, vulnerable society, the future seems to be very bleak. Um, imagine now you have about 10 million children within the ages of five to 15 with no guidance and proper upbringing. In the next 10 years, you would have a youth population of about 15 to 25 years with no skill, no employment, and then with increase, and you know when you have unemployment, that means there is poverty and there will be increase in uh, social vices, crimes, and, 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 and other, and, and what have you. All right, Mohammed. how does your organization begin to put practices in place that could address the foundational genesis of such a group as, you know, the al -Majeris? Okay, as an organization, Teach for Nigeria, we work with underserved um, community, on the South children in low-income communities. And these low-income communities are where these al uh, reside. So um, part of what we begin to do now is to engage the community stakeholders to understand the roots of how this um, uh, practice began. And then with that, we can begin to identify the real problem, take data as records of all the al schools in the, in the community, then afterwards, we could design a model and a distinct curriculum that can be integrated into the mainstream education system. All right. Thank you so very much, uh, Mohammed, for your time. And keep safe out there, too. All right. Thank you, too.